Welcome back to Morgan's video blog, Morgan's online blog in video format. Today I'm here to talk about what does a form rejection mean when querying a novel? So I've queried before. I've queried this story before. 36 rejections in, this story has been decently queried but it has not blanketed the literary agent world, especially since I find myself revising the entire piece every 10 rejections or so. I mean, one of those revisions was based on an agent revise and resubmit request. One of those was based on finding a writing mentor who could hopefully help me bring my writing to the next level and after I finished my latest round of revisions, I queried five of those 36 agents back in July. The most recent rejection arrived just last week, two months after I'd closed out the agent as a quote, no reply means no thank you, but closure is kind. Why haven't I queried more than these five? Well, I told myself I was finishing the revisions for my middle grade pitch war story, and I was prepping for my NaNoWriMo project, and I wanted to see how my new query and first pages worked. All I've gotten is a stack of form rejection letters. So first, let's talk about how I process rejection. Step one. Indulge in self-pity. Now, not forever, not even for a week, unless you, you really need it. But for a night or two, wallow in it. Let yourself grieve the hope that's been shattered and eat chocolate or junk food. Complain privately to a few trusted friends. Step two, distraction. Got any other projects to work on? books or shows to binge, maybe you're also moving or helping school children, or there's always stress cleaning your house from top to bottom and re-alphabetizing your bookcase, forgetting that sorted by color trend, whatever. Distraction can help a lot. Step three, track it. If you can, try to see every rejection as a step toward publication. Maybe you're going for a hundred rejections. Maybe you've decided if you hit a certain number without getting an agent, you're just gonna say bleep it and self-publish. So you log into your querytracker.net account or your spreadsheet or wherever you're tracking who you're querying from which agency. Because some agencies only allow one query for all those agents combined, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So some people paper walls with printed out rejection letters or add a bead to a bracelet or necklace or in some way commemorate every rejection on their path. Maybe that's not for you. Step four for me, assess. What, what's the problem? Do I have a writer friend I can trust to tell me? Can I glean anything from that rejection? Some rejection letters tell you something. Others are just polite form rejections. So let's talk about what one can actually glean from form rejections. Nothing. But because you have a form rejection, there are a few things one can think. First, maybe the query is just badly written and not pulling people in. For me, I, I felt that my query letter was solid, if not amazing, although it is always easier to write someone else's query, I do feel pretty confident in my query writing skills. Option two, the query is well written, but the story is trite and nobody's interested. Maybe. I'm my own target audience, but sometimes from a higher level, a lot of fantasy quests can feel repetitive, and maybe that's why it's bouncing. Third option, maybe the first 10 pages of the story just let you down and nobody wants anymore. But 
this feels weird to say, but I read through my story just before I queried last time, and like the first third of the book really impressed me, and and I wrote it. Um, although when I did get that revise and resubmit, they did suggest more backstory before the inciting incident. So maybe I am starting too quickly before you care about the characters. Option four, maybe 2020 was just a horrid time to be querying, especially YA fantasy. Maybe the agents were being wary and not really picking up much of anything. I mean, you can always blame the market. Uh, but my story is on the cusp between YA and adults and with a couple of edits, I think it would fit better into an adult fantasy slot. So maybe I should be retooling my story to aim at a different market. Or maybe I just need to wait for people to recover from 2020 and start querying again. Um, or obviously option five, these five agents just weren't for me and my agent is out there waiting for me. So all of these options, I think I'm going to start querying again in mid January, give it the agents a week or two to reopen and that whole big glut to go through, maybe send it on a Tuesday morning after coffee, but before they start getting antsy and waiting for lunch. I don't know. In closing, querying is scary. There's very little solid feedback thanks to both outlier writers of yore and today who have argued and harassed agents, as well as the massive number of querying writers these days, as technology makes the process more accessible than ever. One has to have faith in one's writing ability, confidence that the story can stand on its own, and the perseverance to see it through. Best of luck to all of you out there in the query trenches or going it alone indie, and wish me luck in 2021. Thanks you to you all. I'll be back next week with more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.